Hello everyone, thank you so much for checking out my presentation and for this opportunity for me to share my work. And also thank you to Pearson for organizing this virtual conference so we all have this opportunity to get together and share our ideas. The title of my talk is Rocket Science with Kerbal Space Program. My name is Christopher Scott Vaughn and I'm an assistant professor of mathematics and math department co-coordinator at Montgomery County Community College in Bluebell, Pennsylvania. My email is cvaughn at mc3.edu. I think I'll start by just saying a few quick things about teaching with rocket science, teaching math and physics with rocket science, and some really simple but really profound lessons that are available in this subject. I mean, number one, I think, is this idea that of reaching for the moon and the stars. And in a kind of academic setting, I could translate that to be just high expectations and high standards. And another lesson is to be curious and explore the unknown. And here I can think how that fits into just really learning about the scientific process. And next, there's this lesson of learning from mistakes and problems that arise and innovating. And I'm recording this on April 13th, which is about well, almost exactly 50 years to the day when this famous story of the Apollo 13 mission and the problem that they encountered and the problem solving that they were able to heroically achieve. And, and of course, lastly, from the perspective of outer space, it's so obvious we are all in this together and that Earth's boundary is really the most important border. So I will introduce to you this game called Kerbal Space Program. It's really fun. If you have not heard of this before, it's a must. Uh, it's a game that's been around since 2011. It's now available on PC and Mac and Xbox. You can find it at kerbalspaceprogram.com or at steam.com. The current version is 1.9, and players of Kerbal Space Program are all excited about the next major upgrade that we're expecting, hopefully, in uh, next year in 2021. There are expansion packs that you can also add on to the game that include historical craft and things like robotic parts and extra science uh, gathering uh, tools. Those are the expansion packs making history and breaking ground. And there are also a huge number of mods that are modifications to the game that you can also download that are free that add to the game, for example, making it the scale of the real solar system and adding n-body physics to the game. And there is a mod that's called the Kerbal EDU that's available at teachergaming.com um, and that mod is based on version 1.4 of the standard game. But my presentation is really about this lab workbook that I wrote. Uh, the Kerbal Math and Physics Lab. It has problem sets for math and physics and engineering and these are just universal principles that apply in any solar system and I think that's one thing that's so beautiful about this learning with Kerbal Space Program is that you're really able to explore these universal principles. The topics in the workbook range from algebra to differential equations. I have uh, included graphs in Desmos and GeoGebra. I have Excel files that I've generated, Mathematica files that I have generated, and a number of YouTube videos that I've created that um, involve this particular uh, game and workbook. So I've collected this all at this website here, sites.google.com view KSP math. And I will show you some of that in this uh, presentation. And I also have this intro video. It's a 12-minute video, and I will clip into this presentation parts uh, from this intro. Uh, but I hope that you will check out both the website and this video um, after seeing this presentation. So here's the intro video. Hello, I'm Scott Vaughn. In this video, I'll introduce the game Kerbal Space Program and a lab workbook I'm writing inspired by the game as fun ways to teach and learn math, physics, astronomy, and engineering. In the game Kerbal Space Program, or KSP, players build rockets and airplanes and all kinds of other stuff and can fly anywhere in an entire solar system which accurately models Newtonian physics. It's based on precisely the same principles found in math, physics, astronomy, and engineering classes in textbooks from middle school up through undergraduate college level courses. I'm calling my lab workbook, inspired by the game KSP, the Kerbal Math and Physics Lab. 
For most of us, rocket science probably seems way too complicated and intimidating to learn, and understanding it might seem completely out of reach. Maybe the math seems too complicated. Maybe you don't have the training for a job at NASA. Or maybe building a rocket is just not in your current budget. Nevertheless, with KSP, you really can play along at home, or at school. And with the game, you can jump into the past, the present, and the future of the space industry, finding your own solutions to the same questions and problems that mathematicians, physicists, astronomers, and rocket scientists of the past, present, and future have solved or will need to solve. I want to emphasize that many of the questions I include in my lab workbook don't require access to the game. In many cases, the game provides a supplementary illustration of the math and physics. And I want to emphasize that ultimately my goal with this lab workbook is to illustrate the universality of mathematics. That is, how the same math and physics principles and formulas apply anywhere in the universe and how they would apply perfectly in the Kerbal system if it actually did exist somewhere out there in the real universe. The principles and formulas students learn in school are universal and true, for example, whether we substitute the mass of the Earth or the mass of the planet Kerbin into our calculations. The lessons and exercises I've written in this workbook could be used in schools in a lab component, component to a traditional math or physics class. I'm imagining students in a computer lab playing Kerbal, exploring and answering questions in the workbook and having a lot of fun learning. Or maybe the lab work is done by students at home on their own computer. And this doesn't really have to be used as a lab. There are examples and questions in this workbook that instructors could just add into lectures or homework sets or exams in both math and physics classes at all levels from middle school to first and second year college level as fun and real life applications of math and physics. Also, my lab workbook, along with the game, provide activities for math, physics, and engineering clubs at many different math skill levels. The lab workbook material is divided by the level of math required in the exercises, from algebra to differential equations, including pre-calc, trigonometry, and single and multivariable calculus. Now, the game itself does take some time to learn, but as an educator, I think it's worth exploring as a teaching tool. KSP offers a really new venue for creativity and experimentation in math, physics, and engineering in a way that isn't possible in real life. That's because it's truly a simulation, not just a game, where students build and fly airplanes, rockets, and satellites, rovers, space stations, navigate and survey distant planets and moons, mine asteroids, and perform science experiments, just as they might in a real lab. This requires learning real science and orbital mechanics, and a lab workbook based on the game can guide students through the academics of what they are learning in the game. I teach math at a community college in Pennsylvania and I've already created some video lessons for calculus and differential equations that I've posted here on YouTube and I've included those lessons, examples, and questions in my lab workbook. Here's some of what I've done so far. Okay, so actually that was the first eight minutes of my intro video, and I think I'll just stop and jump in right here and say, this is the list of the chapters and the topics that I've covered that I've written so far, the things that I have in the workbook so far, but there's a bunch of things that I still want to add, and I'll talk about that maybe at the end, but um, I'll also want to show you the website that I'm building that has all this material. So this is sites.google.com, view KSP math. On this website, I have the video that I already showed a little bit of that, and here's a description of the workbook and the contents, and here are the these six chapters, algebra, pre-calculus and trig, single variable calculus, calculus with parametric and polar equations, multivariable and vector calculus, and differential equations, and a whole uh, section here with solutions that some of them I hope are, are really uh, you know thorough, not just, just only a number. I also have Desmos and GeoGebra interactive graphs. You'll see some of that. I'll, I'll get to that. And, uh, and then I have videos uh, that I've made so far that relate to these topics. And then thanks to Mike Aben, these are videos that he's made that I have, um, he's uh, agreed to uh, share on here. And uh, there, there's obviously a, more about the math in KSP. Uh, so he's got some really great videos here. These are some Excel files and uh, 
a Mathematica code here, and then some more videos from Mike Aben on really this is a, a beginner series that he's currently working on. He's got six so far, and they're really thorough. A uh, good introduction to the game itself. Uh, and then there's Kerbal Wiki, uh, KerbalX.com, you can where you can find craft files, a forum where you can discuss the math and physics. Uh, and I'll mention um, that I'm, I built this discussion board. I thought that would be a neat way for uh, people to share ideas and discuss the math in KSP. Um, that would be a fun thing to do. So I think I'll just jump back to show some more clips of some of the things that I have in this workbook. There's a video series I created called the Kerbal Guide to Navigation, parts one and two. Personally, I learned a lot about how airplanes and ships navigate on Earth playing Kerbal Space Program. I now truly understand the difference between great circle and rum line navigation, and I included this in the videos. In these videos, I derive and use formulas for determining the initial bearing for the shortest path between two points on any size planet or moon. These calculations can be confirmed for navigation on Earth using common flight planning software available free online. These formulas work for navigation on Earth, but also for navigating on the moon and Mars or any other planet or moon. That includes made-up worlds like on Kerbin or Duna in KSP. I love the irony that flying to see a UFO buried in the ice at Kerbin's North Pole in a game provided a reality check for me on my own understanding of spherical geometry and navigation in real life. There are examples of navigation on Earth, on Earth's moon, and on Kerbin in my lab workbook. In another video, and in my workbook, I created a lesson on solving a differential equation using Euler's method to model a rocket's speed during launch. That equation is sophisticated enough to include gravity, the rocket's thrust, its decreasing mass, and increasing nonlinear air resistance. After modeling the launch using Mathematica in Wolfram Programming Lab, I also used the TI calculator and Excel to, est to estimate the rocket's height based on its speed, and then check all those calculations in the KSP game. Students can follow these calculations in the workbook and experiment by launching their own rockets in KSP, just as one might experiment in a real lab. In my lab workbook and in corresponding videos on YouTube, I use Desmos and GeoGebra to analyze a trip to Kerbin's nearest moon, called the Mun. In the process, I use the game to confirm Kepler's laws of planetary motion, study elliptical orbits, compute the pitch of the spacecraft during flight, calculate escape velocity, and calculate the mass of Kerbin's moon, called the MUN, a calculation based on data collected while in orbit. As I did that, I, it really struck me as a perfect lab activity. It was really fun to check these calculations in a simulation game, as opposed to just Googling to see if I had the right answer for a similar trip from the Earth to the Moon, something which I could have only watched in a video or read about. With KSP, there's more interaction with the math and physics theory, more than just solving an equation and checking the answer at the back of the book or on Google. KSP provides a perfect environment for lab activities, providing a kind of hands-on experience for the student that might wonder, how could anyone actually measure the mass of the Earth or the Moon or the Sun? Or what's the difference between mean, true, and eccentric anomaly? Or how do you determine the launch window for an interplanetary mission or land and navigate on another planet? With KSP and my lab workbook, students can be engaged in asking and answering those questions themselves beyond just reading about it, listening to a lecture, or watching a video. Students can explore the answers for themselves. In another video and in my lab exercises in the workbook, I solve Kepler's equation with Newton's method, using Desmos, GeoGebra, Excel, and Kerbal Space Program to illustrate and confirm those calculations. I use those principles to confirm mean, true, and eccentric anomaly for a flight in KSP, and then use those same principles to confirm real-life data downloaded from NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory, data which I could then use to plot the position of the Tesla Roadster launched by SpaceX in 2018. Students using KSP and the Kerbal Math and Physics Labs can recreate and explore those calculations and principles for themselves. They could even build a Tesla Roadster 
put it on a Falcon Heavy and launch it for themselves. Another example in my workbook uses the principles of logarithms to illustrate and analyze Kepler's third law of planetary motion. However, instead of just using the same routine examples based on the planets of our own solar system, examples that students will always see in their astronomy and physics courses, I use the planets of the Kerbal system to illustrate those same principles. So not only are students engaged with fundamental mathematical principles and applications of logarithms, not only are they applying those principles to understand physics and astronomy, and, and not only are students engaging actively with software that simulates the planetary motion. With KSP and my Kerbal Math and Physics Lab, Students are experiencing the universality of math and physics, that is, exploring fundamental general principles that work for any planetary system anywhere in the universe, even those planetary systems that have not yet been discovered and perhaps could someday in some distant system be like the ones in KSP. So I also want to make the point that I hope this workbook can be valuable to different people in different ways. For example, there are questions here that can be just dropped right into homework assignments or tests, traditional types of exercises from algebra, calculus, differential equations that an instructor could briefly mention in class, their relation to astronomy and rocket science, but don't require much class time to discuss those applications, perhaps not requiring students to learn all the rocket science. Uh, these references could just provide justification and motivation, for example, for why we learn Newton's method or why inverse relationships are important in algebra, or that flight path angle is determined by differentiating a polar function, or how to model in differential equations. But there are also questions here that are more involved, that are, aren't intended for traditional exams, but could be project-based assignments or extra credit assignments, or could be useful to math or physics clubs for extracurricular learning. I mean, right now, with teachers and students all at home in circumstances that make traditional proctored exams difficult, I hope some of this material could be useful for educators for a more project-based approach to teaching and learning. And sp speaking of project-based learning and being online and learning online, I'll jump back to my website that I built. I think we have a real opportunity to do some interesting things here with Desmos and GeoGebra in illustrating these mathematics principles. And so I just wanted to click through some of these and sh show you. I don't think these are really fully developed, but these are some ideas. I think there's potential here for some really neat things to explore. Um, I think I've already showed this one. Let me go to this velocity with elliptical and hyperbolic trajectories. When you click on it, I think what you will end up better if you say open in app and it'll look like this. And so what I have here is a as an elliptical orbit that corresponds to this speed around the planet Kerbin. And I have the eccentricity, specific energy, semi-major axis of the orbit, and I have equations for the ellipse uh, if it's an elliptical orbit or a hyperbolic orbit, and I have the polar form of the orbit. We can adjust the speed, see it change from um, elliptical to parabolic to hyperbolic uh, Another one that I'll highlight here is this uh, Kepler's Law of Areas Calculator in Desmos. I think this is a pretty neat thing um, where you can set uh, intervals and, uh, and look at the corresponding areas. Uh, and that just could be a useful tool for, for many things, obviously, in the Calc 1 class. And just to put it in the context um, of rocket science, this is kind of it's fun. It's just fun. This is a graph that illustrates the flight path angle, which is a topic that you can really um, analyze in uh, Calc 2. If you study polar equations and parametric equations and derivatives of these, you can uncover a formula for the flight path angle. That's this angle phi here that is the flight path angle. And how that changes as you follow an elliptical path, it's just it's fascinating. This is a graph of the flight path angle based on the eccentricity of the orbit. So just finding the point where you have the maximum flight path angle is a simple Calc 1 exercise. And uh, it's just really, you know, by itself, uh, mathematically fascinating and beautiful, and then uh, really clearly applicable in, in rocket science. I have some Excel files to calculate initial bearing and distance between two points on any size planet or moon. 
this is a Excel file. It'll guide students through calculating the flight path angle, specific energy, uh, angular momentum, and eccentricity for suborbital, elliptical, circular, and hyperbolic orbits. So I think I'll flip back here to my intro video where I talk a little bit more about the game itself. There's also an education version of the game called Kerbal EDU, available at teachergaming.com, currently based on one point, version 1.4 of the standard game. One thing I found particularly useful with the education version is how easily it exports flight data to Excel. It's very useful for lab activities. And then there are all the mods and crafts files created by an enormous community of players and programmers. Mods are free downloadable extensions that add features like visual enhancements, additional flight data and tools. The website KerbalX hosts player created craft files. For example, here's a Saturn V and a Falcon Heavy and here's the SpaceX Starship and there's this and that this is so much fun because you're only limited by your imagination and, well, by the laws of physics. And there are a lot of other YouTube creators I should mention, like Scott Manley, that have created educational material inspired by KSP. I'll put links to those creators' channels in the description below. Also check out the Kerbal Wiki for lots of tutorials on how to play and lots of scientific data about the Kerbal system. I'll also include a link to my workbook in its current form in the description below. So finally, this game and the workbook I'm writing really create a playground for math and physics students to learn and experience real math, physics, astronomy, engineering, and rocket science. With this game and my workbook, students can build their own engineering designs, test their own ideas, learn and experience real rocket science, and they can find their own solutions and test their own answers to the same questions and problems that astronomers and rocket scientists have faced in the past, are dealing with right now, and will face in the future. So thanks for watching and thanks for your interest in Kerbal Space Program and the Kerbal Math and Physics Lab. So I was definitely looking forward to this conference as an opportunity to get some feedback, to get some suggestions, looking for collaboration uh, and ideas on, on how to further develop this. And so um, I thought perhaps uh, one way that we could do that, going back to my sites.google.com view KSP math, and at the very bottom, I have this link to this Piazza uh, website, which is a discussion board that I use with uh, all my classes right now. And this would be an opportunity for us for us to, to you know, somebody to make suggestions and comments and uh, ask questions. Uh, and, and it would be really neat to have the opportunity that, uh, you know, instructors that I don't even know could talk to each other, uh, meet each other this way and share ideas here. Um, so rather than just back and forth directly through email, um, this could be really an opportunity for a group to collaborate uh, with ideas uh, and discussion about using this as an education tool. Um, yeah. Okay, and as to some things that I think might be interesting, would be interesting to add in, some things that I'm already working on that I would like to add to the workbook in the algebra chapter. Uh, working on the combined ISP or specific impulse of a rocket with multiple engines. I got that idea from Mike Aben. There's some interesting algebra of complex fractions that might be uh, just a good algebra exercise to have students work on. In the pre-calc trig chapter, I could do some more examples with mass ratios and real-life examples of the rocket equation. And the topic of hyperbolic excess velocity. That just sounds fascinating, right? And hyperbolic orbits are uh, a great topic to explore. Some real-life applications of hyperbolic uh, curves um, using that with phase and ejection angles for interplanetary transfer orbits in the single variable calc chapter. How about a, a lab where you collect data on trying to find the uh, optimal ascent profile, the optimal ascent trajectory, uh, because that is impossible to do analytically. You could do it as a lab where you um, try different um, 
paths, different you know altitudes when you do the gravity turn and collect data and try to find an optimal solution empirically. In the multivariable calc uh, chapter, there's a, a an example in the Stewart book for minimizing total mass for a three-stage rocket with final velocity constraint given by the method of Lagrange multipliers. That's right out of the Stewart book that I use for calculus, and um, of course I would want to give credit to where that uh, idea originated in that book with Stuart, but it would be neat to try to find a way to sort of uh, implement that in Kerbal Space Program and to put it into a workbook as part of something you could actually experiment with in a fun game. Uh, that would be really, really fun. Um, and then in the differential equations chapter, maybe modeling lunar ascent and descent, because there you don't have an atmosphere, and so the equation is a little bit simpler. Modeling bal ballistic missile uh, trajectories uh, could be interesting that include an atmosphere. Um, in fact, there's this uh, project that you can find in the uh, Mathematica website. There was like a blog there where somebody had worked out, redone the calculations by um, Katherine Johnson, uh, just like in the movie Hidden Figures, to determine the uh, landing point after re-entry into the atmosphere. Where's the rocket going to land? And that was redone in Mathematica with some differential equations. I thought, I wonder how well we could model that and then uh, experiment with that in Kerbal Space Program. And then finally, you know, as one of the presentations that I was looking forward to, what is that Mars Baja 100? I would really like to know. Um, maybe there's something there that, uh, you know, Duna is the uh, Mars, uh, the equivalent of Mars in Kerbal Space Program. So maybe there could be a Duna Baja 100. It uh, could be fun. Would love to learn more about that. So I hope to do that. Okay, so to finish off, I'm Christopher Scott Vaughn, Assistant Math Professor at Montgomery County Community College in Pennsylvania. My email is cvaughn at mc3.edu. One other place that you can find me online is if you search Christopher Vaughn on YouTube. Okay, once again, thank you very much for watching.